I have a question for you. Yes, my coffee is delicious. Okay, great. Your coffee is delicious. That's, we're going to talk about your coffee. Okay. So you went out for your, your walk this morning and your exercise. Yes. And I got up and I made you a pot of coffee. Thank you. And I went back into the bedroom to do my reading. And we're sitting down because today is going to be a full day of eating vlog. And I go to have a cup of coffee. Now you've been home for 30 minutes. There's no coffee left. This is only my second cup. But look at the size of the cup. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. And we talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Happy Wing Day! It Finally! Is, it is. It's Wings Day. And I'm so excited because we're actually releasing a new Wings video today. Mm -hmm. That we filmed last Monday because we thought last Tuesday was Wings Day. So we're we a week made behind because that video is coming out tomorrow. And and didn't read the calendar correctly. Yeah, so it's Sorry. wing day. And um, yeah, if you're new to our channel, we're in the middle of our no joke challenge with Bronson Dan, but also our chop challenge where every day we're having something different or trying different foods. Today we're doing wings. So we have a crispy air fryer wing recipe, garlic, parmesan, or parmesan. I call it parmesan garlic. Should we say garlic, parmesan, or parmesan garlic? Which one? I think parmesan garlic. It's more Parmesan than it is garlic. I was going right? to say, I've had garlic wings where you're like, I'm never, never going to have a friend again because I am just like, my mouth is offensive. But garlic's not super, super keto friendly. Like a little bit of garlic is okay, but garlic, there's a carb in every clove and I could easily eat 50 cloves in a sitting. Oh man, especially roasted garlic. Oh yeah. So let yes. us know, do you guys like garlic? Let us know down in the comment section. We used to eat so much of it pre-keto. Yeah. It was actually a little bit challenging dialing it back. We, yeah. we talked about, you know, in the past, different things that we struggled with. Mm -hmm. And you immediately, your mind goes to things like potatoes and bread. Right. But dialing back the garlic and the onions. Yes. Vidalia onions used to be in everything we now ate. Now it smells up the whole house. I'm not a big fan. Yeah. Recipe for that video or the video for that recipe, right up here. <laughs> we have a sponsor for today. First of all, we are drinking Bones, Jingle Bones. Jingle coffee. Bones, Jingle Bones. Because it was 40% off after Christmas. And actually, this has got a little bit of a what sweetness a to it. Yeah. And so, like, I'm actually drinking a black. Can you believe I'm drinking a black? But I'm drinking a black. I don't have any sweetener or anything in there. I can't believe you're drinking it like that. I put two capfuls mm -hmm. of almond milk in mine. Okay. But again, the sweetness, you're right. We found, Rachel, a really cool thing last night. Hydro Flask. We had to go to, what was it? That's Marshall's. They're all the same, right? Marshall's, Marshall's TJ, TJ Maxx. Max, they're all the same. Home Goods. So we're looking for a birthday present. And uh, I came across this. It was just sitting on the shelf along with like all like the water bottles and stuff. And there's no price. And I grab it. And I'm like, this is Marshall's, right? I know how much they're supposed to be. They're like $38 to $45 online. So I'm like, it's Marshall's, which means it's going to be discounted. So I'm figuring price is coming in somewhere around $25. Rachel, completely worth it. She loves her mugs. We're getting ready to drive to New York. She's going to want her hot coffee mug. And, and this is one. a genuine Hydro Flask. And this is like super spring, summer color. Like it's it's the perfect, you know, middle ground for spring and summer. Right. And But I was thinking to myself... Like, oh, I don't want to spend $24 or $25. But then when they did the price check, they were like $13. Yeah. And, we were, and I'm like, I'm getting it. She's like, oh, that's a lot of money. I'm like, do you understand how much these things cost? I was willing to spend $25 on it. We have learned that you don't go cheap on these things. The no. knockoff brands of these type of things, like I like Contigo. Well, not only that, they, they leak. Right. The one thing that I needed to do is not leak. Right. And if I get the knockoff brands, it's like, it just leaks. What I like about this one is you can actually like 
so you have your your open and your close but then if you turn it just a little bit more you can actually take off the lid and like clean there Cause because sometimes those crusty. seals can kind of get really nasty Ew, like a sippy cup like yeah. a a kid's sippy cup used to be so gross after a while because it like you could never get into all of the little intricacies yeah so yeah i was willing to spend like 25 bucks for it Rachel didn't know that at the time, but uh, when they rang up, when it rang up as $13, I'm like, yes. And Rachel's like, ah, oh. I'm like, we pay $10 for Contigos. And it's true. Our Contigos are years old and like all the paint is peeled off of them, which is kind of like alarming in itself. I call them battle damage. So we have a sponsor for today's video. It is Perfect, Perfect Keto. Keto. So if you don't know what Perfect Keto is, as I drop it, they have some <laughs> delicious nutritional products. Uh, all keto focused. They have collagen. They have MCT oil powders. They have glucose capsules. They have uh, their base powder, which is exogenous ketones. Again, great product if you need to get a little bit of extra focus or a little bit of energy for a workout or something like that. They are not going to help you lose weight any faster, so don't take them for that. But they are great if you need that mental clarity, if maybe you need higher ketones for medical reasons, something like that. Uh, we love all of their products. They do have a brand new product, which we actually launched our... yesterday for the day that we're filming this video. Really good clean ingredients. Uh, nutritionally, one bar without my uh, glasses, 150 calories, 12 grams of fat, 6 grams of protein, 12 total carbohydrates. I love the fact that they're keeping the carbs low. Yeah. Five dietary fiber, and then the rest is all coming from allulose. So uh, I like the fact that it's low in dietary fiber. They are really delicious. And again, there's a link down below. You can use the code 2 Crazy Ketos, and that'll save you some money on that. But we really appreciate Perfect Keto for sponsoring today's full day of eating vlog. So please support the sponsors that support our channel. So what are we eating today? Okay, so this is a busy day, and I have to get going. I have to go wake up Anthony because we are leaving for New York on Friday morning. Whew. I got a day of cutting yesterday. Okay. And I got a half a day. I, I was working on my taxes all night. Like, are you guys up on your taxes yet? Like, I had... The extension was like a blessing and a curse. Because it, the extension it, made me usually... You are getting done right away. Usually my taxes are done in February. And this year, I just, you know, COVID, right? It pushed you off and pushed you off. And I was really lazy this year. Usually I'm really good with, like, receipts and stuff. And I have all my receipts... But all my receipts were screenshots of like photos or screenshots from like buying online at Amazon saved in a folder saying receipts, an entire year's worth. Oh my goodness. That had not been put into my Expensify software, organizing it into this is a computer and this is buying mulch and this is doing this. And so I've spent the last five days hours having to enter every receipt in because I didn't at the time that I bought the thing actually put it in one by one like you should yeah and so I'm paying for that now so I need to get the taxes done before we leave because yeah extending our tax deadline just made me extend my responsibility so it's interesting that you're kind of talking about procrastination yeah and sort of like like the paralysis of analysis is what, what I've learned. Like sometimes if I try to just think it through, like how long do I have to do this? Like what do I need to do? Sometimes I can just like think about doing a project, think about doing something and then not actually get up and do it. And I almost like fell victim to that this morning because I woke up and I knew it was arm day mm -hmm. and I knew I was facing 260 push-ups. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, should I wait a little bit? Maybe I should get up a little bit later than normal. You know, I could sleep another hour. Like I was just kind of like rolling it around in my mind. And I thought, stop, stop negotiating with this because you are just going to stay in bed. If you don't just get out of bed, just do it. Sometimes the answer is just do it. Like Nike's got it right. Just do it. Don't think about it. Like don't try to negotiate with it. It's the same thing I think with snacking now that we're going into like a full day of eating. It's like sometimes I will pause at the refrigerator and I need to just move on. Mm -hmm. Don't stay there. Like, no, you're not supposed to be here. Go like right. police yourself. Like get away from that. Like don't don't sit there and negotiate and talk to it. Yeah. Speaking of procrastination, let me get back to uh, what I was procrastinating. 
And that is, I have so much to do today and I don't want to start it because I got to go cut because we're leaving on Friday. Yeah. So I've got to get all of my work done, but I'm procrastinating some of the work because I'm like, I need to cut it as late in the week as possible in case we get a bunch of rain while we're gone and then the been grass raining. grows. And yeah, now it wants to rain every day. It hasn't rained in months. But now when is it going to rain? When you're this getting week. ready to go on a trip and you don't want, I need the rain to come in two weeks. Not this week. Definitely not next week. But I got my new grill, sort of. So we ordered a Rectech grill and I'm super excited about it. And I ordered it and I'm like, why isn't it here? It's only coming from Georgia and it's being shipped like through a shipping company. And so I research it and I, and I finally find the tracking number and then like it just says make in Georgia or whatever. So I call the shipping company or I actually look online and it says, oh, it's like at the shipping place or the delivery place waiting to be processed. So I call them up and they're like, oh, yeah, we've had it for six days. I've been trying to call you. Six days? They have the wrong phone number. <sighs> so I was like. Well, we're getting ready to go away, and, like, they have to bring this thing with an 18-wheeler, so I'm going to go pick it up today. Okay. Then I'm going to come home, and I'm going to put it together after I go cut grass. Is it going to be, like, a plane? Is it going to have a million know. parts? I don't know. I don't know. Is it, like, Ikea furniture? I don't know. I have no idea. So I'm going to go pick it up, and then we're going to eat. So we may be eating late because we are eating off of that today. And we're going to do wings, and um, I think we're going to do some smoked wings, and we're also going to do uh, some beef ribs, some beef short ribs. So we're going to do all of that. And I want to go get four new tires for the trailer, either today or tomorrow. Well, I am going to be working on making sure every single stitch of laundry is cleaned in this house to prepare for the boys to have like everything they I can need. help on that. How about I just don't work close for the next four days? Then we won't have any laundry. No, we can't do that. Well, well, well yeah, we can. We'll get Let's letters. Let's send the boys out. And we'll then get they, letters. We'll just stay naked for four days. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll get letters. <laughs> but I'm going to get all of that done. And also, I am not going to put off or procrastinate on, on getting some work done for church. Like, right. I need to write some scripts. We need to tape some videos. Yep. For kids ministry, so I plan on having four scripts, four weeks done by the end of today. Well, it's a busy day, so let's get started. Well, here it is. Now we got to get it home, and then we're going to have to get it out of the car. Okay, so I got three scripts done for kids ministry, not four, but I couldn't wait any longer. I had to get in the shower because I am meeting my daughter for a hike at John Prince Park. Joe and I actually camp there. We put a video on our Two Crazy Campers channel about it. It's an awesome park. I really like it. And it's kind of halfway between her and I because they live about two hours away. So if I go an hour north and she comes an hour south, we can sort of meet in the middle. And I know technically she is my daughter-in-law, but I have never like that kind of terminology. I don't even like saying mother-in-law. As far as I'm concerned, Joe, Joe's mom is my mom too. Maybe it's because we are part of a blended family and I never really thought that terminology like stepmom, stepdad, stepbrothers was ever really helpful in bringing the family together. It just sort of felt like a degree of separation. So I just kind of hack off the in-law and it's just sort of like you're my daughter that's how I feel about you and hopefully you know she feels the same way about me I mean our relationship is is still in the beginning stages but it's nice that we like hanging out I love having an adult child that that wants to hang out and feels like it's important to to make that time for us to grow in our relationship. So I love it. I'm really excited that she also likes to be outdoors like I do. And she likes getting in her exercise, especially just walking around and chatting. And that's like one of my favorite things to do. So I'm glad that we can share that together. It is going to be her birthday Saturday and we're gonna miss her birthday party because we'll be on the road headed towards um, Joe's mom's house. And I'm really sad about that because it's her first birthday as our daughter. 
So I'm just bringing a present with me today uh, that we picked out uh, yesterday, Joe and I did. And um, she's got a new puppy, so definitely we wanted to get her some mugs and stuff that that say, um, you know, dog mom. I also got her some pajamas, like really soft pajamas, like tank top and shorts matching set. I don't know why, but when it comes to buying gifts, I like to buy gifts that will make the other person feel snuggly. Is that weird? I buy a lot of socks. I buy a lot of pajamas. I buy robes. I just like, I buy blankets even for guys. I just like snuggly gifts. I guess it is the closest gift thing that I can buy someone that equates to a hug. And maybe every time that they use it, they feel a hug from me. I don't know why. What is your go-to present for somebody if you are buying a gift for another adult person? I mean, obviously if I'm buying a gift for a kid, it's usually a toy. Never clothes because I always feel like kids want toys. <laughs> but, um, but for an adult, it's usually something snuggly. What do you buy? So we picked up the grill and uh, the box weighed 300 pounds. It came in three different boxes. So we took everything out of the box and carried it here to the backyard. So we have the grill here and then here's all the pieces. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it. The chickens are all over here going, what is going on? I hear all the noise, like listen, look at them all. They're just piled by the door. And they started coming through the doggy door there. So we have to keep putting things in front because they just come through and then Tabitha moves everything. So we're thinking about just eliminating the doggy door now. So if you do buy one of these grills, uh, just be warned, they don't come with any instructions in the box. They come with a QR code, which is gonna take you to their website where you can either watch an installation video or you can download and print the manual. Uh, usually I would just watch the video, which I sort of kind of skimmed through but I printed out the manual and I'm gonna keep it here just to kind of reference as we go along because normally I'm not much of an instructions guy. Okay, we're all done. Took about an hour, definitely not too bad. And that hour included the fact that I had to go look up the YouTube video. And then also I bought a couple of accessories. I bought that smoke box there. And I also bought a shelf that's down on the bottom. And the manual that you download doesn't have any instructions on how to put that on that's like separate. So I had to go back and find a video on that. And also uh, the shelf you're supposed to put on with the legs, but I didn't know that. So I had to like take off one of the bolts for the legs to put it on. So add a little bit of time, so definitely not too bad in an hour. Uh, I did it all by myself with the exception of Anthony helping me install the smoke box. He held it up while I was bolting it in. There was no way I was gonna be able to do that by myself. But overall, definitely not a very difficult process. I mean, it's just a few bolts. Uh, really not too hard to put together. So right off the bat, I love the attention to detail on this thing. First of all, it's gorgeous. I like the black that goes with the stainless steel, just the way everything goes, but it, it just, it's really sleek looking. And I really like the temperature gauges and everything on here. Now, uh, the details are really cool. For example, I love these bull horns as a handle to lift it up, I really like that. It kind of goes along with their logo and I, I like this logo piece right in the middle. Uh, even down on this shelf. Now this shelf was extra, but I like having something that I can like, you know, put the meat on when I'm taking everything out and it, the shelf folds down. I'll see if I can do this with one hand. Uh, so there's like a little button over here. So we'll press that. And then there's another one over here. You press that and it just folds down. Although I'll always leave it up. I like the fact that this one is stainless steel because the one that I had on the Pit Boss had just like some sheet metal and it rusted, which caused the top piece to rust. I did not like the design on that one at all. This one will be easier to keep clean. The only thing about the shelf that I don't like is down below there is a bull handle here, or like a bull nose, which you could hang a towel on and uh, it gets covered up. So this thing is now covered up by the shelf. So that kind of stinks because I like the way that looks. Now down here, I do like the shelf like this rather than a solid shelf that allows the water to go through. The dirt doesn't collect on there. And while we're down here, 
nice tires over here and then caster wheels over on the other side ignore the dirty floor we have to pressure wash out here um over here on the side we do have our bucket and i just buy those bucket liners it makes it a little bit easier for cleaning later on uh now uh getting into the main part of the grill here so we have these handles here we're gonna lift it up now this is the rt 700 not quite sure of what the square inch in here is but it's the same size as my pit boss which was 800 square inches of cooking surface plus uh 300 of an up an upper shelf now this one has an upper shelf available i didn't purchase it because i never use those things i just like take it off and stick it in a corner so uh, this is plenty enough for our family there is a light back there which i really like because we do a lot of our grilling at night and sometimes i can't turn on the outside lights because the chickens are still awake uh, now uh, i like these grates as well because it's a little bit easier to keep them clean and they do have these like searing grates which i've ordered some uh, so that you can put a sear on and it doesn't cover the whole thing i also like the way this uh, pan is for the bottom for the drip pan the one that you had with the pit boss it was a pain in the neck to clean it was round it was a pain to take out i like this one it's one solid piece it doesn't slide back and forth and i can line it with tin foil so closing this thing back up we do have over here a nice little shelf along with our control panel and uh, here's your light switch and it does have wi-fi for your meat probes another little thing i like is this little piece right here to put the wires for your meat probe so you like with a pit boss you had to kind of like there was a little tiny hole but uh, it was a pain to get in there so a lot of times you just kind of put it in underneath the lid now i also like this this is a little detailed just a little piece to kind of hold up your lid so when you put your lid up here it'll just kind of hold it up there so we don't have to worry about it bouncing and snapping or anything. and i like the fact that they're replaceable as well and then here's the hopper uh, we had a little bit of rain, so that's what these, these spots are from. Uh, so here's the hopper. It's a nice big hopper, holds 40 pounds, and I like the way this like kind of slips in, the way they're taking advantage of the shape of the grill so you can really get a lot in there. Something I like about this one that I didn't like on the Pit Boss is they don't have that grate here, which is great for safety. It stops you from sticking your hand down there. There is a sign right here saying there's a rotating auger. So don't stick your hand down there. But the problem that I had with the Pit Boss is the way it was shaped, a lot of times the pellets would kind of get stuck up on the side. And then because that grate was there, there was no way to like even get a spatula or anything to push them down. So it was kind of a poor design on the Pit Boss. I dealt with it, but there were a lot of times where I would run out of pellets even though the hopper was half full. Now, one thing I will say that I don't like with the hopper here is you can see it's in the back, it's behind the grill. And I've got this pushed up against the screen house, which means I can't get around to the other side where you're gonna fill it up. So to fill it up, I'm going to have to like reach over the grill and pour the bag in. And I actually normally keep my pellets in like a big old like tote so that they don't get all wet and stuff. It's like an old pool tote. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit more of a pain for me to fill this up as opposed to when it was over on the side, like with the pit boss. And uh, I'll just have to make sure I'm always filling it up before I start a cook. I never see myself going through 40 pounds in one cook, but I don't wanna have to try to add in the middle of a cook because I'll be going over a hot grill. So getting back to the grill, uh, this was an accessory we purchased. This is their cold smoking box. And uh, I think it was like $200 or something like that. But I'm really excited to have this because I can get into like cheeses and maybe some fish. Anthony wants to try smoking butter. Uh, but this just goes where you would normally have your chimney. So normally your chimney would be right here. This just kind of takes the place. And so now we move the chimney to the back. And the idea of this is, is the smoke's going to go from the main grill. So you can have that set on say 200, 220 degrees. And the smoke's going to go from there and then just fill up in this chamber and you've got your three racks so the upper part may be a little bit warmer probably about 110 degrees 120 degrees whereas the bottom is going to stay like 80 or 90 degrees again depending on what temperature you have outside as well as what's in the grill but that'll allow me to do some beef jerky and stuff maybe while i'm smoking you know some ribs or a brisket or something like that so i'm really excited about that and they actually have two different temperature probes and i again love the bull handle that locks it on 
Uh, and then over here, we just have our pull handle because the bottom is on caster wheels. Since Rachel's not home, I'm gonna run into Sam's Club and see if I can find some stuff to make beef jerky and some other foods on the grill. So I just got home. We hiked over seven miles. It was pretty hot. I I'm think, so proud of you. I think that I I got pretty like overheated, but it was okay. Speaking of hot, you look really hot right now. Yeah, and my towel. No, I, I don't mean like hot, like hot, like I mean hot, like sexy hot. You look awesome. <laughs> look, even Tabitha thinks so. And I got to spend time with my grandpuppy, which is like Tabitha was like smelling like, where have you been, young lady? <laughs> I'm a little dirty. Just a little. Here, I have a present for you. Ew! There's a few of them like this. Look, here's another one. Okay, I can't do it with the feathers on. So I actually just, we're making some wings and I'm gonna just throw these out to the chickens because like, why not feed a chicken like a chicken? It's one of their favorite foods, which is kind of creepy. I'm gonna give this one to Grayson and see what he does. Round one. Round one. It's 6.30. Aztec's Revenge. You're eating all of my Christmas presents. The God of Fire Habanero Mexican style hot sauce. Well, that's gonna go good with what we got here. So this is just, we're smoking food. Yeah. It, and you just never know when something's gonna be ready. So I'm making beef ribs. It's done when it's done. They went in, I wanna say around 1.30 or so. 1.30, somewhere around 1.30, 2 o'clock. Three hours, I wrapped them. So now they're at that stall point where they're they're sitting at 177 degrees and they're gonna sit there and then all of a sudden they're gonna go bang and uh, they're gonna be ready. So hopefully within an hour. In the meantime, we're gonna start with this and I have some wings that I smoked. It's wing day. For like 30 minutes, 45 minutes in the smoker along with the uh, beef ribs and now they're crisping up in the air fryer. I'm excited about this. I went to Sam's Club to find some more meat because why not? More and meat. I'm like shocked by how much like beef. We don't really buy a whole lot of stuff unless it's like special. And all of our meat has stickers on it that says yeah, special. Yeah, well, at Sam's Club, uh -huh. at Sam's Club, ribeyes are eleven dollars a pound. I I don't remember like. The last time we just bought ribeyes, but I know it was like seven dollars a pound. Yeah, that seems high. And that's Sam's Club, so I was like, oh, I feel like Whole Foods is going to be cheaper. So I looked it up on Whole is Foods because I used to buy them for like nine dollars a pound yeah. in Whole Foods. If they have a special, eighteen dollars a pound right now. Eighteen dollars a pound. Yeah. What's, what's ribeye going for where you're at? I know. I don't know. But anyway, I found these. Because we like the jalapeno ones, and I was like, oh, th these are limited edition flavors. So we got two of them. One of them was in a uh, pork and andouille sausage, mm. one carb per whole sausage. These are like the jalapeno ones. They're four carbs per sausage. Wow. This is chicken hatch green chili. It is all flavor. The ingredients in these are chicken water mozzarella cheese, which is low moisture part skin mozzarella, Part skim milk, cheese culture, salt, enzymes, green chili peppers. And then we have less than 2% of spices, salt, dry vinegar, roasted hatch green chili peppers, dehydrated green chili peppers, celery powder, sea salt, paprika, natural flavors, granulated garlic, and natural pork casing. It's like a really good jalapeno sausage that doesn't have a tremendous amount of heat. It just has a tremendous amount of that like hatch chili And then flavor. we put just a little bit of cheese on top and like crisp everything, of course, on the Blackstone. So all of the cleaning is outside. Mm-hmm. Except for the air fryer. Yeah. That is delicious. That is really good. A couple eggs from the girls, cooked perfectly. Thanks, ladies. So this this is the perfect cooked like yolk. Like little runny, but not too runny. Runny for me, but that's all right. So we're gonna eat this. We're waiting for the wings. Then we're gonna have the beef ribs. Oh wow, those look incredible. Look at that. Can you guys see that? Look at that. Yum. So they got that nice smoke flavor and color. But then we, I, one thing about smoke wings, sometimes they don't crisp up. No, they don't. And we like them really crispy. So like we threw them crunchy. in here for like the crisp effect. I want that one that's like burnt. I'm excited about these. 
spoon. Look at that. Look at that. Let's see what we're working with here. They're gonna be hot. Got the skin good and crispy. That is hot. Ooh, yeah. Hot. Hot, hot. Okay. I'm trying to find one. Give me Ooh, one. look at that nice, I was gonna smoky say, look pink at, yeah, center. Like, it's got that pink color. You got what I wanted. That you only get when you smoke. Mmm. That is good. Flavor all the way through. These are really good. So we're going to eat this. I do want to say... What's with the green tip? It came what? with the straw. No. It feels like an old timey cigarette. Yes. That's like long and yeah. I don't know. I think it'll be fancy. Somebody actually asked, I, th I think it was Heath and Shelly during their live stream, like where we find these big straws. I'm going to put a link for them down below. I get these off of Amazon and they're like, they're jumbo straws. They do come with this thing, but it's like, now what did you do? Put it on here? Well, yeah. I don't want that. No. Coleslaw. It's been a minute. We yeah. had a half a cabbage left over. Maybe a coleslaw earlier. From St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> but that's the cool thing about cabbage is it doesn't really go bad that quickly. That's no. That's what is nice about it. So this is our, like, our coleslaw recipe is linked down below. It's on our website. It's so good. And, uh, yeah, I love this stuff. Mm. Oh, yeah. Why do we make that more? Look at this. Okay. So we've got beef short ribs here. We have, I made them two different ways. Oh, wow. Look at that. They're so funny looking. Except, for, okay, so, so you have this one here. Oh yeah, these are done. <laughs> like where they're falling off the bone. Wow. So this one here, I rubbed in mustard. Mustard? Oh my gosh, look at that. And how. then I put my seasoning on. Look at how tall look that guy this. is. <laughs> look at the height on that. Look at that. That is hilarious. Oh you goodness. look at these and you're like, yeah, that's not going to fill me up, but it is so fatty. So filling. Look at that. Look how delicious that is. We got to dink this one. This is I a, haven't even gotten to mine. Which one are we trying first? This is dinkable. The first one I got, the one that was rubbed in mustard. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Dink. Mmm. So how do you know your your ribs are done? Look at this. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> right off the bone. Okay, we're gonna try the other one. Yeah. Oh, you have a towel. I do. Okay. Look at that. I mean, that is just I think meat royalty. Wow. Wow. No words. These are good. Oh, wait, fatty. <laughs> That's the best part. Just look at that fat. Mm. It's a good day. Worth the wait. Most I am. Yeah, these are really good. Got these from, um, where did I get these from? Sam's Club or Costco. I don't know. One of those places. Thank BJ's. you, whoever we got it from. I don't know. They were real. These are really, really good, though. I feel like I did get them from Sam's Club. I don't remember now. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. We'll come back and we'll wrap up this whole vlog and everything. Tabitha, what are you doing? No, 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 sit. It's so early. Sit. Oh, wait, mommy's on. Hey. Hey. 
Did you have your walk? I did. Um, I know we have a lot to do today. We uh, do. We fell asleep last night, and uh, we forgot to finish out the vlog. Can I just say that those beef ribs were amazing? <laughs> like, best of life. Oh, I love it when you're like all I'm sweaty exercise. Super, super sweaty. I think it's hot. I have a wife who exercises now. Oh, you do. I do. Congratulations. Look, the cat's here. She's like, what's going on? <laughs> so yeah, we uh, we ate those beef ribs last night, and we had those wings, and we had Amazing. the delicious coleslaw, and it was so good. And then we started watching a movie, and we passed out. Out. Done. So we have a lot to do. I have to go to work. You have a bunch of stuff to do. We have to pack. I think the prospect of all of the stuff you have to do to get ready to start the trip wears you out. This is not just the longest RV trip we've ever taken. This is the longest trip we've ever taken. We've trip never, trip. in 14 years, we have never gone on a vacation for more than like four days. Oh, wait, I should... We did drive to New York once, but that was like six days, and that was with the boys. Right. Like, I don't think we've ever been away from the boys for this long. So, here's the thing. If this video gets uploaded, okay, that means our marriage survived it. So, good job. I'm going <laughs> to high five. High five. We're going we're gonna to do a, a preemptive high five, believing that well, we will get gonna through it. Well, it's not going to go up until probably... Like, after the trip. Yeah. Because I have, like, so much to do. So, if you're seeing this, we're still married. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Thanks for cheering us on. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, you know, different types of vlogs and stuff, do us a favor, hit that like button. Also, please do us a favor, support our sponsors. Perfect Keto is a huge sponsor and supporter of our channel. So, please use that link down below if you need any products from Perfect Keto. It lets them know that you appreciate them for supporting us. Now, if you don't need any Perfect Keto products, obviously, right? Don't you know? Don't go just do it to, for the heck of it. There, you can like go join our Patreon or something like that. But we really appreciate you guys using our sponsors and those Nola bars. Those things are coming with me on the Pretty trip. Crazy good. They're really good. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we have linked right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way, subscribe to our channel, and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we come back from a trip married, you'll be alerted to Until it. Until next time. Bye. bye.